Genesis 1, uh, 26, we'll begin there. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He him, male and female created He them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Chapter 2 and verse 7, The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I want to read a scripture from Romans chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Then lastly, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I want to speak to you this morning on this thought, a new life and a new identity. Will you pray with me? And pray for me as we get into the Word. Father, we thank You for Your presence in this house this morning. God, we thank You for the way that You have moved already. God, as we worshiped You and testified of Your grace, Your goodness, Your salvation. Father, now as we come to the reading of Your Word, God, I pray that You would anoint the reading, hearing, and the preaching of it. God, Lord, give us eyes that see, ears that do hear and a heart that's prepared to receive Your seed like, so, like seed. Receive Your Word like seed on good soil. God, I pray, Lord, that You would speak through my life today. In Jesus' name, we, we ask it. And everyone said, Amen, amen. and Amen. It's really been on my heart this week, this thought of identity it means who you are. It's the way you see yourself. It's who that, you, who that you believe that you are. So much of our life we spend letting people define who we are and what we are. What they call us. What they say about us. The way they make us feel. That shapes our life. Everybody in the world is being molded and shaped by something. Paul writes to the Romans in Romans chapter 12. Don't be conformed by this world. This world's trying to mold you. You go through things and outside of Christ, it's going to shape you. You're a little child. Somebody hurts you, calls you names, walks out on you. That's going to shape you. It, it's going to either turn you into a, you know, a crushed, defeated human being that never believes you fit in, never feel like you belong, or it's going to turn you into a fighter and a mean, bitter person through your life. We let people define us by what they say about us, and we're born looking for that identity. We're born looking for a place that we belong. It's important for us as a church, let's be people that love people. Let's be people, y'all, that when, when strangers walk through the door, you got no idea if they come back. It won't be because the worship was so good or the preacher was great. It'll be because they felt loved and they felt like they belong. It's so important. Love people. Hug them. Make them feel like they're part of the family and they will stay. They will be touched by the worship and they will receive the preaching of the Word of God. How many of you ever been... Walked into a church and didn't anybody speak to you? You going back? 
Probably not. Probably, probably not at all. So I, I know sometimes maybe that's not our character. We're just these warm, bubbly people. Hey, how, you know, we're, we're not like that. Maybe we're a little introverted and, you know, we, maybe we feel like we don't belong around. You know, I'm fine. You put me on that tractor in the middle of nowhere and I ain't got to talk to anybody. But I tell you, the Christ in me wants to know who you are, wants to know what you're going through, and wants to minister to your life. So stir that gift up. Up. God help me to love and to see people like you see people because people are looking for, for an identity they're looking to fit in they're looking for a place that they belong God says in Genesis 3 and verse 9 Adam where are you? God's looking for a people who have lost their identity Adam was born with an identity that he was handed to from God. The Bible says we read it, God created man in His likeness. His image. In the image of God, God created man. How's that, how's that for an identity? God made me to look like Him. That's exactly what it means. Adam and Eve were made in the likeness and the image of God. That means that when God looked at that man, He could see reflected in that man His own image and His own glory. That's why He didn't need clothes. It wasn't that they didn't know any better and they were just walking around naked. They were clothed with the glory and the light of God. A perfect man. A man without sin. A man who could walk with God in the cool of a day. But we know the story. You know the story. Man lost their identity. I told the men Wednesday night, I was at work one day this week, and I just got so mad at a man. Just wasn't doing his job. And, you know, just attitude and error. I was just so mad. But then I, I just began to look at him and, and think of it in, in light of this. And I thought, you know, God created that man in His image, in His likeness for His purpose. But Satan has reduced it to the point, you just fill your lungs up with smoke. You can't even have a conversation without blaspheming and cursing the very one who made you. And God put me in this man's life to show that man God has a better life, a better plan. God has better than that for you. Here I am mad at you. God help me. So man was given that identity from God, but he lost it. The serpent crept. You've got to know, folks, wherever God is working, the enemy ain't far behind. Why? Because he hates the life of God. He hates life. He's not against religion. He's joining churches. If He can just get you packed into a place, makes you feel good for a little bit, but you never change. You never see Christ. You never turn and say, God, I'm sick of this old life. I want a new and I want to live for Your purpose, for Your glory. I'm done trying to fill my life with the vain things of this world. Jesus, take over my life. He wants to keep you from that. He wants to put you in a place where you're just comfortable and, and petted and made to feel good about where you are. But in Christ, there's a new identity. In Christ, there's a yearning. The more I see of myself, I was ashamed for, for being angry at that man at work this week. And the more I see of myself, the more I yearn for Christ, the more I want Him. Wherever God is working, the enemy ain't far behind because he wants to steal from you. You remember the parable of the sower. That seed is God's Word being sown into the lives of people. But as soon as they walk out, the birds come representing the evil spirits of this world. He will steal it. That's why you got to hold on to it. God, I do believe this. I do believe You can change me. I do believe You're working in my life. I do believe even when I fall down, I do believe I'm a new creation. You buried my past and I am not going back. That is not who I am anymore. I'm going to live as this new man in Christ. Adam lost his identity. That serpent crept into a perfect place. 
and begin to speak lies. Jesus said every time the devil speaks, he speaks a lie. you got to know if he's talking to you this morning saying you're not going to make it, you're wasting time, let it encourage you because all he's doing is lying. And while he's lying, he's testifying you are going to make it. You just got to continue to walk with the Lord. Adam lost his identity by listening to the wrong voice. His wife was deceived. She gave him the fruit. Now she's telling him what to do. We let deceived people instruct us in our life. You better be careful the voice that you're listening to this hour. Man, there's pressure from the outside. Pressure to conform. Why are you doing that? Why are you going to that church? Why are you, why are you being a part of that? Why do you spend all day at church? And you're listening to some... They're making you feel bad and ashamed for what you're doing for God, but you're listening to some boy. They wouldn't know God if He showed up wearing a red suit. I'm not going to let you instruct me and teach me who I ought to be, but I'm going to get my instruction from the... B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Amen? So be careful what you're listening to. The wrong voice can talk you out of your identity. The wrong voice can keep move you away from the path that God has ordained for you to walk on. In this case, it was His wife. Could be your wife. It could be you. It could be the wrong voice will always many times be Someone close to you. It's the wrong voice. It can be a real disciple. Remember Jesus is telling His disciples, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to suffer and die. Rise again the third day. Peter grabs Him. Matthew 16, Peter grabs Him and says, God forbid you're not going to the cross. Get behind me, Satan. Because you savor the things of man, not the things that are of God. Peter's not devil-possessed. It's just that fallen nature talking. It's that carnal mind that's bucking what God is saying, resisting the will of God. You ain't got to do all that to be a Christian. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. You don't have to read your Bible to be a Christian. I can tell you, that's always that fallen nature talking, telling you you, all the things you ain't got to do to go to heaven. That's not a spiritual mind. The spiritual mind says, how close can I walk to God while still being on this earth? And Whatever God has for me, that is what I want. Why do I want to throw in my lot with a fallen world that's going to be burned up and consumed one day when I could have Christ being formed in me and in my life changing me and God's will being done and God could use me to rescue souls from this world that will be consumed one day. That's all Satan wants to talk to is that fallen nature. That's why you got to be careful. Let the Word of God guide you. Surround yourself with people that are walking with Jesus. People that are looking to pull you up, brother. Pull you up, sister. Yeah, I know you fell down. Yeah, I know you're going through a bad season. But that is not who God has called you to be. Get up. Brush yourself off. Get back in the race. you got no idea. Some of you this morning got no idea the strength that other people draw from your life just by you still being in the race. And you haven't gone. You haven't thrown in the towel, but you're pressing on. God puts people in your life. Man, it may be for a while you're helping them up. But there may come a time, brother, they're helping you up because of Christ being formed in their life. I see that. I'm glad God puts brothers in my life. There was a time, man, I was helping them up. There have been other times, man, they've had to reach back and, and maybe they didn't even say anything to me. But I just look over while I'm running this race. My God! And they're still pressing on after Jesus. And I get strength from their life. Satan wants to talk to that fallen nature, that fallen man. And and instead of seeing life through the lens of Christ, through the lens of God, instead of looking at people like, man, that guy's lost and needs Jesus and God wants to use my life to show him. Oh man, he's just an idiot. Are you going through things and instead of, God, I want your will to be done in my life. Or no matter what I lose, no matter as long as i got Jesus, I've got it all. That devil will get to talking to that fallen nature. You know, Kyle, if God was really good, you wouldn't be going through that. 
Oh, if God was really good, they wouldn't have died. If God was really loved, He would have done. And if you ain't careful, you're going to get reduced down to the place. Is God even real? Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's always that fallen nature talking. God wants you to live in a way where you know that you know that you know that He is real. you got to understand, some things happen in this world we simply have no explanation for. That's but not because God isn't good. That's because this is a fallen world. That's because men lost their identity and who God created them to be. And when He did, He let in a floodgate of corruption, satanic influence, brokenness. That's why that lost man, everything he touches is destroyed and broken. And God is the only healer. And when it seems like everything is falling apart, man, don't run away from him. Run to him and let him put the broken pieces of your life back together. That way. Amen. That way you don't end up a byproduct of what you've been through. Oh yeah, you can tell She's been through a lot. That's why she treats everybody like that. What a terrible testimony to have. God wants you to stand and, yeah, you've been through the fire. (laughs) Yeah, people treated you bad. But if you smell me, brother, I don't smell like smoke. I smell like Jesus this morning because I was walking with Him in the midst of... Oh yeah, the devil attacked me, but I still got a song. Me and my boys were reading Job last night and in one day he lost everything that mattered to him. But the Bible said he went out and stripped himself and bowed himself to the ground and worshiped God. I come into this world naked, I'll leave naked. God gives, God takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Be careful. Brother Wesley brought this out that the enemy wants to accuse us to God but then accuse God back to us in the middle of what you're facing and what you're going through. Adam eats that fruit. And immediately, here comes that accuser in his ear. That voice, shame, condemnation. God's going to kill you. Look what you did. Look what you've done. Immediately, Adam knows, I've messed up. Oh God, I've, I've, I've wrecked it. Everything, has, everything in his life has changed. You know, the act of sin may just last a moment, but the shame and the guilt of it can last for a lifetime. It becomes a prison. It becomes your identity. A drug addict, a drunk, an adulterer, a a homosexual, a quitter, a loser. All these kinds of things. It becomes the, the prison that people live in. And the enemy is just out there causing me. You know what you need to do, Adam? Hide, because God don't want you. Hide, Adam, because God don't love you. Hide, Adam, because look at what you've done. And when that happens and you run away from God, your life becomes a prison. Everything moves out of divine order because you're not in right relationship with God. God says to Eve, now your desire is going to be to rule over your husband. Now she's lost her place in God. Her place was to be His helpmate. God made Adam out of the dust of the ground but when he went to make that woman he put the man asleep pulled a rib out of him and from the man the woman was made because of all of his life she is to be by his side strengthening him helping him they're to walk together so that that family has structure and love and order now you see all across the land It's lost. Now the man is just some idiot that don't even know which way's up and the woman's wearing the pants and Everything is out of divine order. And because they don't know, listen to me, because there's chaos at the house, this chaos is trickling down. Now it's in Cain and Abel. Abel wants to serve God. He wants to do it God's way. God instructs him, if you want to meet me, meet me at this altar with the blood of the Lamb. I still love you. I still want you. But I can't accept you like you are. Come with the blood of Lamb. In other words, come with Christ. He's going to die in your place so that you can be brought back into relationship with me. 
Cain wants a relationship with God, but he wants it in his terms. You better be careful. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. God has one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. It's not just God trying to get you to heaven. He's trying to get you back to the Father. Jesus didn't come just so we could all say, well, we're all going to heaven one day. He wants us to get back to the Father. That is relationship and that is identity. Cain's trying to bring his own fruits. Abel's saying, Cain, you can't come that way. Come and bring a lamb to the altar. But instead of listening to that voice of truth, it produces a spirit of murder. It produces a spirit of hatred for his own brother. This is how quick the fall happens. You pull God out of His rightful place, your life will be flipped upside down before you can eat. Who was holding it together? It was God. It was this man in his right relationship with God, but sin comes in and it destroys it. And so all of his life, this man is searching looking for an identity. He runs from God in his shame. Covers himself with fig leaves. Covering up my life with all the things of the world. It's different, but we've all, it's different for all of us, but we've all tried to cover ourselves with the fig leaves. What is a fig leaf? It's something that's withering and dying. You cut the leaves off the tree, it's just a matter of time because they're disconnected from the source and he's covering his life with it why because I don't want you to see who I really am I'm covering up the pain and the guilt on the inside and all these things are band-aids to make me feel better for a moment a little bit of money this girl this boy this drug, this alcohol, this image, people do it even in church and in religion. I feel better because of my position and in my title. But on the inside, all the positions and the titles in the world will not get you back your identity with God. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in tents of wickedness with great riches. Man was searching for their identity until a man was born who had a real identity. You'll call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sin. That's who he is. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That is his identity. They called Him a devil, stripped Him naked, and nailed Him to a cross. But it's too late, world. You can't put your labels and your titles on Him. He's already got one. He is King of kings, Lord of lords. He is the bright and morning star and the fairest of 10,000. He came to redeem men back to God only in Christ. Will you find your true identity not in the world, not in how much money you make, but an identity from the One who gave His life for me to redeem me from my sin. It doesn't matter if everybody you've ever loved have turned their back on you and abandoned you. If you could really know the love of Jesus that He gave. It doesn't matter if you burned every bridge and wasted opportunity. If you could hear that sound from heaven, I still love you. This man hurt that on his bathroom floor that night I gave my son for you even in your drunken stupor I still love you to redeem me back to the image and purpose he created me for to live on the inside of me to manifest himself in me to put a value on my life that the world cannot take away. The world can't buy it. 
They don't have enough money. It wasn't bought with silver or gold or the riches of men. But Peter said, but the precious blood of a spotless lamb was shed for me. That is the value of my life. Boy, that changes the way I walk. That changes the way I go home and me and my wife, maybe we're not, we're not jiving today, but instead of wanting to split from her because she's not fulfilling me as a wife should, let it be a fountain of living water flowing up on the inside of me where I don't need you to pour into my cup, but I can pour into yours and your situation and whatever you're going through because I know who I am in Christ. wasn't bought with silver and gold, but the precious blood of a lamb. I'm just going to bring this out. This is going to be a little raw. And you may tell me you shouldn't talk like that in church, but somebody needs to. This is why the world is in an identity crisis. And they want to turn little boys into little girls and girls into boys. Because they were meant to be given an identity from God. Preach that to them while they're little. Preach that to them before the world teaches them how to live and how to look and how to act. Sweetheart, God loves you with an everlasting love. And we're going to be receiving His love. And in this house, is going to be filled with God's love. We're not going to call each other stupid. We're not going to say we regret having you. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident. But before God put you in your mother's womb, He knew you and He had a plan and a purpose for your life. You're going to know the Father's love because your Father is going to love you. You're going to know your mother's love because your mother is going to love you. And we're going to raise you in the presence of God. And when you fall down, we're going to reach down and pull you up and tell you your failure doesn't define you. That's what your Father does. Put that inside the home. Let the, let the kids get their identity and their value. The Holy Spirit whispering to them in the altar and in their bedroom at night. Let them have visions and dreams at night. Brother Wesley of standing on foreign lands before a huge crowd preaching the life-saving gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let God give them a calling before the world does. It's your mandate. Men, women, because if you don't give them an identity, show them their identity rather in Christ, this world's going to give them one. I knew a girl one time, when I was in school, man, she was beautiful, smart, great, made good grades, and she was pure, didn't do the things that Everybody else was doing. But because the pressure of it, everybody else is doing it. And she's got friends that have no value of themselves. Just the pressure of it ends up giving her purity to somebody she didn't even really know. Not because he loved her. Not because he valued who she was. Just wanted what he could get out of her. And then from there, got all the boys' attention. Not because they thought she was a great person. They just wanted what they could get out of her. Lives are wrecked. Lives are destroyed. Because people don't know who they are in Christ. I remember I was a young man and young teenager. Man, I felt the call of God. I felt it. And there were times in my life, man, I wanted to serve the Lord. I knew I was going to be a preacher. But I didn't know about this new identity in Christ. I didn't know about righteousness being given to me. I just wanted to earn it from God and show God that I was serious by the life that I live. So when I was doing good, I felt good about God. 
if I witnessed to my friends, if I read my Bible, if I stood up at break while everybody's talking about this and that and the other and just preached Jesus at break, boy, I felt good about myself and I felt like God was smiling saying, that's my boy. But when I didn't do great, I didn't feel good about God. And man, I went from preaching to my lost friends to leading the pack of my lost friends. I remember the day, I remember I got this, we had older people would go and buy alcohol and I remember getting, you know, a few bottles of alcohol. I didn't even like the taste of it. I just, I'd pour it out when nobody was looking. And I went from that to, man, I couldn't drink enough. I was 17 years old and I was drunk every time I could get a chance. Just looking, man, looking. Every time I felt uh, somebody talked about God, some people like to get drunk and talk about God. Man, I was like, Adam, I'm running from that. I don't want to talk about Him. Because I, there's no telling what He thinks about me. And I'm so ashamed I failed Him. And I don't want to think about God. And I can't wait till I get big. I ain't going back to church. Until one day, a lot like you, Brother Stacy, at the bottom, he came looking for me. Adam, where are you? Luke Polk, where are you? Oh God, I tried all that. I tried all that. I tried all that, and all I did was fail, and I just don't, I don't know if I believe in you anymore, and I don't see, there's nothing in my life worth redeeming, you don't want me, oh, but I do want you, and I'm just going to bring you into this narrow place, and I'm putting a choice before you, this is life, and this is death, choose life that you will live. And I just remember falling, y'all, at the feet of Jesus and giving Him all that shame and that guilt and that trash that I'd been carrying for several years. And man, when I got up off of that floor, I felt light as a feather. I felt like I was as clean as I could ever be. Why? Because God gave me a new identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remember feeling tempted to go back to that old life and man, I would just stand on. That is not who I am anymore. I don't do that anymore. God has made me new. That's what God does. That's the new identity that God has for you in Christ. Isn't it amazing how quickly God turns things around? (laughs) I mean in just a moment, in an instant in His presence, God turns things around. Beware the pressure of other people. Comparison. Man, I want what he's got. How many of you ever been in church and thought about another person? Man, I want what they got. I want to be like them. It's good to be able to see Christ in other people and admire that. But you better be careful that you don't end up copying them. And it's never real because you went to men and not to Christ. Go to the source. If you're here this morning, and you're like, man, I, I, I just, I don't really know where I stand to God, with God. I don't know where my life with God is. I don't really know if I'm really saved, if I really know Him. You don't need to run to men. It's fine to get somebody to pray for you, but go to Him. Jesus ripped the veil from the top to the bottom. Men didn't rip it to get in. God ripped it so that men could go into the presence of God by faith in Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed on the cross. And God, I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of one foot in the world and one foot in Christ and I'm up and I'm down all over the place. God will come and meet you where you are, but you won't stay where you are. He will change you. You'll get a new identity. The devil will come and accuse you about your past, but you can stand on that solid rock and say, God has forgiven and forgotten my past. It's washed away in the blood of Jesus and I'm not going back 
And God will begin to build a new work in you. I don't need to compare myself to you. Why? Because God hadn't called me to be you. I'm glad you are who you are. And I, wanna, I don't want to belittle your gift. Or I don't want to belittle mine thinking yours is better. We're on the same team. That's the freedom that's in Christ. I'm not trying to outrun you. Man, I want to build you up. I want us to be, we're part of the same body. So whatever God's called me to do, I want to do my best at doing it. And I want you to do your best. And do, don't try to be like me. Thank God we get to learn from one another. Amen. I hear somebody say something, I put that in my pocket. That's why I had to let Brother Stacy go on and testify this morning. You ain't careful, man. I'll preach that. <laughs> I'll preach your life. I guarantee you I will. For it's over with. We get to learn from one another. But God's not a copier. God is a creator. God created you to be you. And if you know, man, He loves me. He is forgiven me. He lives inside of me. It will change the way you do it. I'm not talking about self-confidence and you're just the champion and go live your best life. I'm talking about Christ, the champion, lives on the inside of you. So stop looking down on yourself and comparing yourself to other people, but walk as the conqueror that lives on the inside of you is. Walk in this new identity in Christ. I told my wife this week, I said, you know, the older I get, I'm only 22, but <laughs> my 32, got one more year to, be, to get like Jesus, 33, a couple months, the pressure's on. The older I get, the more I realize other people ain't looking at you. <laughs> They ain't concerned about you. Just do you, bro. <laughs> Go live your life. You want to wear that shirt? Put it on. <laughs> if you like them shoes, put them on. Go wear them. And quit living your life through the lens of other people. Or you're always going to miss your assignment. You're always going to miss what God has called you to be and God has called you to do because you're worrying about what a bunch of people that ain't even thinking about you are thinking about you. It's confidence. Walk in Christ. It's a new life. It is free. And even if they say your shirt looks dumb or your shoes are stupid, I've already been with God this morning and He loves me. He's moving in me. He died to save me. Say what you want to say. It ain't going to stick. I've already got an identity. I've already been called a name. I already belong to somebody. So if I don't fit in with you, now don't let it pro produce some independent, bitter attitude where I don't need anybody and you post on Facebook 18 times a day how you don't care what anybody thinks and you're fine on your own. No, that's evidence you ain't fine. But if you find yourself, you don't belong. And instead of just being the end of the world, thank God there's somewhere I do belong. Man, there's 8 billion people on this planet. If four of them don't like you, go find somebody that does. It's easy. If you know, if they don't like the way you preach, go find somebody. If they don't like the way you sing, if all they remember you for is your past, God, open a new door. If your job stinks and ain't nothing but negativity and wickedness there, God, help me to have a pure heart in this thing. Amen. One day I was really feeling sorry for myself. You know, people don't know how rough I got it, and if I had it like him, I could do a lot better job. I read this quote from Charles Spurgeon, if a man can't serve God right where he's at, he couldn't serve God anywhere I bowed my head and asked God to forgive me for thinking like that prepare a table for me right here in the presence of my enemies 
Sometimes God will open a door and get you a new job. Other times, He'll change your heart right in the midst of them. And instead of you letting their bitterness and negativity and that terrible weekend that they had rob you of the good one that you had with your family and in the presence of God, God's ministering to you right in the midst of it. Man, some days I don't want anybody to stop me at work because I'm in the tractor with the black windows and I done turned that place, man, into a house of worship. And I'm crying tears and I'm speaking words. I don't know what they mean, but God is in there moving in my heart, moving in my life. Wherever you are, you can turn it into a house. If you know that Christ lives on the inside of you, nothing can keep you from His presence. Don't be a copycat. You don't want to be shaped and molded by men. Because you start letting that happen, you're going to get off down the road and realize it's just men shaping you and you're just saying stuff to please people. God is not moving in your life. God didn't call you to be a copycat. He called you to be you. Just be faithful to where God has called you. Listen. Man, I know that we have dreams and goals and ambitions and we want to grow and we want to succeed. But you just think of this, man. The best thing I ever do in the kingdom is love my wife like Jesus loved me. My boys grow up with a great value on Christ and His Word. They know who they are. My little girl knows she's loved by Jesus. Not looking for it in that world. That's an awesome accomplishment. A lot of folks don't get that. God gives you that opportunity to do it. Sometimes we're always reaching for more because somewhere in our heart we're comparing with other people. We miss where we are right now. It's like when you're little and you can't wait to be 10. Then you can't wait to be 16. Then 18. Then 21 for the wrong reasons. Next thing you know, you're 32. Life is just... Yeah. Instead, enjoy where you are. Let God meet you where you are. Some of you may feel like, man, I wasted a lot of years in my past. I'm, I'm 55 or 45 or 65. Where... You can't go back and change the past. And the devil will use your past as a prison. God says this, Ephesians 5, redeem the time because the days are evil. You can't go back in the past and change what you did, but you can make the most use of the time and the years that God has given you. Don't waste them. In Christ, He redeems years. In Christ, He can redeem relationships and influence that we lost and destroyed in the past. God is able to put all of that together because people will see. Maybe they remember the old you. But they will look in your life and see, man, He's changing. Something's different about Him. What is it? It's Christ. I'm not speaking out of a battered past or, 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 a, or, or, a, or a wrecked life. But I'm speaking out of a redeemed life and the love that I've found in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's not a copier. He's a creator. Go to Him. God, begin a new work in my life and He will give you that new identity. People believe lies. Some people just lie (laughs) all the time. That is their fig leaf. It's a lie. People lie about what they have. They don't have anything. Y'all ever just run into people and you know they're lying, but they don't know you know they're lying? You just let them talk. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Not impressing me. You don't have to impress me. Because they know they, they've been taught and trained by the world. If you don't have this or that or the other, then you're nobody and you're nothing. But if, if we could just see the value God has placed in them on, if we could put a value on people that God has placed them in Christ. I don't care if you walked here or you rode here in a Cadillac. It doesn't matter. 
I don't care if you put $500 in the offering or you can't afford to even buy lunch today. You didn't put anything. That does not affect the way God looks at you and it doesn't affect the way the true church should look at you. You don't have to lie. That's where we get this modern day plastic Christianity. Everybody's Ken and Barbie when they come to church. Well, if I don't feel like Ken today, what if I'm broken? What if I'm messed up? What if I didn't walk like a man of God this week and I fail and the devil's lying to me, telling me I ought to quit, telling me I got no right to preach to other people. I ought not even go to church. I ought to just lay in the bed and throw in the towel and quit on the ministry. Look at you. Look at you. I think church ought to be a place where we don't have to cover ourselves with lies. But we can take the mask off. Because behind the mask, I'm just like you are. You're just like I. We're all people who need Jesus. We're not here this morning because we got it all figured out. But we are people who know our answer is in Christ. And i got to get to Him. You don't have what I need. You've got a measure of what I need. But I need Him. So I'm going to pour my measure in. You pour. If we get a hundred of us to pour that measure in this morning, the fullness of Jesus would be in this house and people would leave changed. Some people just lie because they're afraid of who they are. If I told you how I'm really like, it's like, just quit asking people how you doing. <laughs> Might. <laughs> Some people just, ah. <laughs> well, I'm making it. You know what? If you ain't doing good, there's not a one of us in this room that hadn't been through a time where, brother, I ain't doing good. And I'm here I'm physically, but emotionally and spiritually, mentally, I'm drained. And the church needs to be a place where we can gather around those that are just holding on for dear and pour into them. And to be able to share where God has brought us from and how God is. And sometimes, brother, I still, I don't know why. I know the problem ain't with Jesus and it's not with this gospel. Sometimes I just struggle to believe it and walk in it. And sometimes I don't feel like I ought to feel. But in the midst of it, brother, you got to preach this to yourself. I am a new creation in Christ. My old man was crucified with Him when Jesus died that that wretched man that I was, he died too. And when Jesus arose from the grave, I arose with him to walk with him in newness of life. And the Holy Ghost lives inside of me. I'm not under law, which means God ain't judging me and helping me based on how well I'm doing today. But I am under grace. It is a gift that I didn't work for and I didn't earn. I just need to say thank you, Jesus, for loving me, for washing me, me and for making me new. Preach that to They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb. We're washed in the blood by the word of their testimony. My testimony is the blood of Jesus. That is how you overcome. Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm landing the plane. Don't you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? If you don't know who you are in Christ, here come, the devil will even take that. See there, you ain't going. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind... Thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. None of them. Listen to verse 11. And such were some of you. 
You used to be. Such were some of that. Past tense. In other words, Jesus has given you a new identity. Such were some of you. It's not Ken and Barbie Christianity. We came from the gutter. We were lost. We were deceived. We were sinful. You heard it this morning. Been to the bottom of every bottle, every pill, every kind of drug. All of that. But that's who I used to be. But now you are washed. Everybody say washed. That means from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. That precious blood has touched you. And it washed away the stains of sin. And a fallen identity and Satan lost all the rights that he had to point at you and accuse you I have been washed not by Dawn soap and Clorox but the precious blood of Jesus has washed over my life look you are sanctified that means set apart and made holy these hands used to do a lot of things this mouth used to say a lot of things but God has redeemed it and called it holy for His purpose, and you are justified. That means God has declared you innocent, righteous. means the devil starts accusing God doesn't see it because your life is hid with Christ in God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You see, Jesus said when you know the Truth. Whoever's playing, you can come on. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. God says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, My people are destroyed through lack of knowledge. You don't know the truth? Satan's just wrecking your life. You're living with a false identity. You're comparing yourself to other people. You're lying about who you are and what you're going through. But when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. When I believe He loves me, it will change the way I live. When I believe that He loved... When we were yet sinners, Christ died for... He didn't come to call the righteous... But He came to call sinners to repentance. So if you're just drowning in shame and guilt because of your sin, let it be the announcement, Jesus is calling for you. And He wants you to come home. And this is the confidence. Come like you are. Be honest with Him. Take the mask off. Let Him wash you. Let Him change your identity. Then the enemy will lose all the... That is not who I am anymore. I am washed. When I believe He has forgiven me, it will change the way I live. I won't live according to what I did or what I used to be, but I will walk in free. That is not who I am anymore. When I believe... Listen, go a step further. Not just forgiven but free. When I believe He has freed me, it will change the way I live. Not only is that not who I am anymore, I don't have to do that anymore. Jesus broke the chains of sin off of your life when He shed His blood on the cross where He defeated death, hell, and the grave. Preach it to yourself. That's not who you are anymore. Running back to that will not bring you joy. It will not bring you comfort. It will not help you cope with what you're going through. You are a new creation who's not fueled by drugs and alcohol and sexual perversion. You are a new creation whose life is dead and hid with Christ in God. Run to Him. Run to His presence. That Spirit has been put on the inside of you. It cries, Abba, Father. Father, I don't want to think this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to live this way. I want to walk like the man or the woman, the boy or girl that you have called me to be. I believe you've broken this off of my life. I'm not an addict anymore. I'm not a loser anymore. I'm free. Whom the Son has made free is free indeed. I'm going to believe If I fall down, I'm going to preach that to myself. And I'm going to get back up again. Thank you, Jesus, for your purity. 
Thank you, Lord, that you never failed down. Thank you that in you there is no blemish, not one spot. Thank you, Lord, that you tell me if I confess my sin to you, you are faithful and just to cleanse me and forgive me of all unrighteousness. And if I walk in the light where you are in the light, then we'll have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ His Son constantly cleanses me of all sin. You can't stop a man that believes that. You can't defeat a man that believes that because he's walking in covenant and in the identity that Jesus has given him. Drop the false identity. Take up Christ. Would you stand with me this morning? Listen. Jesus said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross. Follow me. You know, that self is what gets in the way of a lot of people. Whether it's pride, whether it's condemnation and guilt, whether it's the shame of where you've been. Jesus said, deny it. Pick up the cross. You know where you get a new identity? It's at the cross. That's where Jesus took that old man so that you could be made a new creation in Christ. Let him take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. What's a man advantaged if he gains the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me in my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his own glory with his Father and the holy angels. I just come to tell you today, Many are walking under the power of that false identity. The devil's put his labels all over you. And it's become a prison of shame and regret, torment. Jesus came to give you a new one. He come, Luke 19, walks through Jericho. There's a little man who can't even see Jesus. He's so short. He spent his whole life cheating and stealing. His name's Zacchaeus. Climbed up in that tree. Jesus walked right under that tree. And said, get down, son. I'm coming to your house today. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Zacchaeus got a new... It's not in the world in what you got, Zacchaeus. It's in knowing Christ. And I want to tell you today that it doesn't matter where you've been, what your life has become. Just like Adam was call, God was calling Adam, where are you? He's calling for you today. The devil will have you spend your whole life trying to cover it up with those fig leaves. It's never going to be anything but death and failure, regret, lies. Jesus wants to wash you in His precious blood, clothe you with His righteousness, give you a new identity. I want to encourage you this morning, if you're just struggling with that, man, if you don't know Jesus, you need to call on Him. Oh God, I'm sorry for the way I've lived and God for the things that I've done and I'm tired of it take it from me take this old life God give me a new one he will if any man is in Christ he is a new creation old things pass away all things become new if you're a young person just struggling to know who you are or where you fit in the world 
only place you're going to find it is in Christ. It's in Christ. If you've covered your life just with lies, band-aids, maybe you're here, you're a religious person that just copies others. Oh, God has so much better than that for you. He's not a copier. He is a creator. He'll begin a new work in you and mold your life to be like that of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to open these altars this morning. If you need prayer or you just want a place to meet with God here this morning, if you need to lay some things down that you've been carrying, maybe there's shame in your life, why don't you just put it to rest once and for all? God, that's not who I am anymore. Not who I am. Maybe if you have failure in your life and something just keeps pulling you back to darkness and sin, surrender it to Jesus this morning. God, I don't want this. God, you've not created me to be this, to live this way. Take it. Take it from me, God. God, I believe that you've made me new in Christ. And that's the way I want to live. I want to live for you, God. I want to live in a way that would bring you glory. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I just pray all through this congregation this morning. You would reveal to each person the value that you have placed on their life. Or that they're not searching for a place they belong or looking for somewhere they could be loved. But God, they would know they belong in Christ. Lord, they would know they belong in You. God, I pray that You would heal hurts and wounds this morning. And God, give people the confidence to take off the mask, take off the lie. And just be honest with You. Just be honest with You this morning. God, we thank You today we can come just like we are, but You won't leave us like we are. Lord, thank You for that testimony in Corinthians. Such were some of You. Such were some of You, but now You are washed. You are sanctified. You're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Oh God, let identities be changed. Oh God, that men wouldn't get their value from the worldly possessions they have, but that the Lord of glory lives inside of them. Oh God, Lord, help us to value one another with the same value You have placed upon us. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
would climb to in this life. If they don't know you, it's all for nothing. God, use them in your kingdom. Use them in your purpose. God, make them know they belong in you. They're accepted by you, God. Strengthen their lives today. In Jesus' name.
you, Lord. I'm going to ask you one more time. You just lift your hands this morning. And if you know it's true, just thank you, Jesus, that I'm not who I used to be. Thank you, Lord, that I am washed. Thank you, Lord, that you have sanctified me and you have justified me in the name of your Son and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, everything changes when you know that God has forgiven you, that He has justified you. Such forgiveness and f- such freedom and forgiveness. People are held in prison by the shame of their past. And that's why they keep running back to it. That enemy rushes in. Look what you've done. God doesn't want you. So people run from God rather than run to Him. I want to encourage you this morning, keep running to Him. Because you run from Him, it ain't going to get better, it's going to get worse. You can be honest with Him. Don't wear a mask in His presence. If you ain't doing good, tell Him. But don't let it become your excuse and your crush, your crutch. Let Him change you. God makes new. It's been a wonderful day in His presence. Amen. Wonderful day. Wonderful day. I want you to walk with a new identity. I want you to walk according to who you are in Christ and what God says about you. When you feel that guilt, condemnation, just preach that to yourself. That's not who I am anymore. God's forgiven me. God has changed me and God has made me new. When you feel the temptation in your flesh to go back to what you used to be, no, that's not who I am anymore. If you find yourself in the midst of your own failure, fight to believe. It's not who I am anymore. I'm not going back. I'm going to walk with Jesus. Amen. Praise God.